Good evening. I'd like to call the City of Menasha Administration Committee meeting to order. Clerk Galeazzi, could we have the roll, please? Alderman Nichols? Here. Alderman Taylor? Here. Alderman Sevenick? Here. Alderman Kruger? Here. Alderman Tom Grady? Here. Alderman Ted Grady? Here. Alderman Rapella? Here. Alderman Langdon? Here. Thank you. Our first item of business this evening is to approve the minutes from the Administration Committee meeting of August 5th, 2019. Is there a motion? Yes, sir. Alderman Rapella, let me turn your microphone on. Yes, I'll approve the minutes. You'll make a motion to I'll approve the minutes? I'll make the, the minutes? motion to approve the minutes. Second. I'm sorry, where did the second come from? Thank you. Good. Alderman Rapella moves to approve the minutes, seconded by Alderman Grady. Are there any questions? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed, nay? Minutes are approved. We have two action items this evening, and I'm actually going to um, take number two first um, out of uh, respect for Alderman Langdon here. Uh, o twenty two nineteen. And this is going to read a little bit differently. After speaking with Attorney Captain, it's one that we need to repeal and recreate. So, O2219, an ordinance repealing and creating, recreating Title VII, Chapter 4, Section 7 4 1 of the Code of Ordinances. And this is uh, regarding direct sellers. Attorney Captain, could you provide an explanation about this ordinance? Thank you. The current ordinance that the city of Menasha has, the same section 7-4-1 is proposed to be repealed and recreated. And the one that is in place is one that we cannot enforce. What it indicates is that the practice of going in and upon private residences in the city of Menasha by solicitors, peddlers, hawkers, itinerant merchants, and transient, transient vendors of merchandise, not having been requested or invited to do so by owner or owners, occupant, or occupants of said private residences for the purpose of soliciting orders for the sale of goods, wares, merchandise, um, is declared to be a public nuisance. Um, and so we are um, attempting to regulate, however, the activities of those direct sellers, solicitors, and hawkers of merchandise uh, and services that are sold in conjunction with the sale of merchandise when they go door-to-door -door or home-to-home. -home. So this would not include um, those that are going business-to-business, -business, sales salespersons. Uh, that would be an exception. Um, and what it is is a registration ordinance. And so there is certain information that will be required, uh, a registration process. And if a vendor is not registered, uh, they cannot go to door to door, home to home, uh, selling merchandise. And so there are some exceptions which you will note have to do with um, charitable organizations. Um, there are some things uh, that are defined in the exemptions that we are, um, I guess, just clarifying that if someone is ha uh, requesting, if a homeowner is requesting somebody to come onto their property, that would be different. If um, someone who's delivering newspapers, fuel, dairy products, bakery goods to regular customers on established routes, that 
again, is something that we do have to exclude from the registration. Uh, the purpose of it, of course, is so that we are ensured that we know who is in the city moving door to door trying to sell their merchandise and or uh, services in conjunction with um, with their merchandise. And so there is quite a bit of detailed information that we are requiring and that is, it's my understanding that uh, what happens if there is someone going door to door, typically the police department will get a call from persons, you know, concerned with that type of activity perhaps. And um, in this fashion, we will uh, know who it is that is going door to door, what kind of vehicle they have, um, who it is that they're working for. Um, they do have to disclose if they have had convictions of any crimes or ordinance violations related to uh, the business within the last five years, what that conviction is for, the nature of the offense. Um, so those are, th that's some of the information that is required. The registration would be completed and a person would be able to go ahead and go door to door selling their merchandise as long as they're registered, if they're not registered. So if, for, um, if the person, as an example, was convicted of a crime or uh, ordinance violations related to the business, within the last five years and the um, registration was not accepted, that person would have an ability to appeal that uh, to the administration committee. Um, or if there would be some kind of a revocation of the registration under this section, again, a person would have the ability to appeal that to the administration committee. Uh, I did also identify the uh, things that uh, it, uh, could come into play if the registration was revoked, and that would be such things as um, lying on the registration form, failing to disclose uh, convictions, or things like that. It, it, similar, I guess, uh, to the process that we have in place for uh, alcohol beverage licenses, if, if you kind of recall how that process works, so that if there is a revocation of that registration, because this isn't a license, it's just a registration, but you cannot um, be in the city performing those activities without being registered. So if your registration is refused or if it is revoked, the person should have an ability to appeal, and, and we do have that in um, worked into this ordinance. Thank you for that, Attorney Captain. We'll look for a motion and then open the floor to uh, discussion. Alderman Langdon. Thank you, Chairperson Nichols. Um, before I make the motion, I'll, I'll, I'd like to um, make my comments, if that's okay. Okay. Chair Thank you. Um, how this came about was um, <clears throat> last year, um, last spring, uh, I've talked to quite a few people, and of course, you, you know, you see it on the internet, um, on Facebook, um, that there's a seller out there going door to door and just being very rude, very obnoxious. Um, and they, they wouldn't go away and, 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 and so forth. Um, just bad people, we'll say. And so that uh, we saw that all summer and fall, and then um, some constituents got a hold of me in the fall, and, and I says um, that, yeah, uh, let, me, let me see what I can do 
um, over the winter. And um, at that time then, over the winter, I got uh, talked with uh, Chairperson Nichols um, on her thought, um, because she's admin, um, uh, what her thought would be uh, and if she wanted to um, do this with me. So we are actually co-chairing this um, ordinance. Uh, I think it's a great ordinance. I think the attorney did a great job. Um, it took a while, but it, it, it finally got done. So um, I think it's a great ordinance, ordinance and, and that's how it came about. Um, so with, and, and thank you, Chair Person Nichols, for working with me on that. And uh, so with that, I will make the motion for 0 dash 22-19, it's an ordinance amending Title VII, Chapter 4 of the Code of Ordinances for the direct sellers. We have a motion and a second, motion by Alderman Langdon and a second by Alderman Tom Grady. Um, the motion, I'm to sorry. The, to the secret. Okay, you gotta, you gotta speak up over there. I've often said your voices sound the same. <laughs> Um, and that motion does uh, need to read repealing and recreating section 7-4, I'm sorry, repealing and recreating Title 7, Chapter 4, Section 7-4-1 of the Code of Ordinances. Are you comfortable with that change, Alderman Langdon? Yes. Great. Um, and yes. thank sure. you. Yep. So we'll just do a friendly amendment to that. And... With a second by Alderman Kruger, is there any discussion? Alderman Taylor. We've always been told there isn't a friendly amendment. <laughs> right? That attorney agrees with me. But uh, my question was for attorney captain. Uh, how would the, maybe you said this, or maybe it's in here, how would someone know if someone's registered or not? They come to the door, is there a, something they have? Attorney captain. A person under the ordinance is required to have some type of identification that is legible and visible on their person uh, when they go up to someone's door. In addition to that, if a person is registered, they will have a receipt from the clerk's office identifying that they have registered. So they would be required to show that. If they don't have it, um, then I would suggest that someone inform the person that there is, is a registration process in the city of Menashe and that they would need to go to um, the city center to the clerk's office and then um, fill out the um, application. Is there a charge for that? It is a $20 okay. uh, processing fee. And that's something we should put in the Horizon newsletter that people can ask for that receipt so the public knows what to ask for and if they don't show that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good idea. Alderman Kruger. Uh, thank you very much, Chairwoman. I, so in, in general, basically, uh, uh, companies like the Swan people or Schwans who deliver goods to the route, this does not apply. Boy Scout, Girl Scouts who go around selling their num-nums across the city do not apply. It's for the people that do the direct sales, like uh, uh, vacuum cleaner salesmen, stuff like that, fuller brush person, I don't know, are, are <laughs> the ones that would actually, this is the main thing that, that applies to, correct? Yeah. Attorney okay. Captain? Yes, that is correct. And with the charitable organization, um, you may notice that what we did include in here is that they have some type of a permanent office or headquarters in one of our um, counties, Winnebago, Calumet, or Outagamie, so that really what it's for is to ensure that if there is someone that is out of this area, that that organization or person who's representing that organization would be registered so okay. that we know um, where 
and that is legit. How to get a hold of them. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, we'll take a roll call vote. Motion carried on roll call 8-0. Thank you. And our final item this evening is 014-19, an ordinance repealing and recreating Title III, Chapter Three, Section 3-3-7 of the Code of Ordinances dealing with public records. Attorney Captain will address this one as well. Thank you. We have been working to update our fees relative to the um, copying of public records. Uh, we also updated our policy with regard to public records. And this update is to our retention schedules. Last August, the end of August 2018, we did have the Wisconsin um, Public Records Board uh, approve what's called a general record schedule, and it contains um, information about retention of Wisconsin municipal and related records. It is, um, oh, what is it, about 50 about 50 pages of, of um, records and information that's contained in that. And you may recall that a municipality that has a records retention schedule that it is supposed to be reviewed every 10 years and it does, every retention schedule has to go before the public records board for approval. And so, um, in adopting the schedule that is actually put forth by the Wisconsin Records Board, what we would just need to do is identify that, uh, that we are going to be adopting their record schedule, and then we just, there's a form that gets filled out that we let the Public Records Board know that we're going to be following their recommendations for um, retentions. They recommend that we, that all communities in the state of Wisconsin use it so that it's consistent throughout the state. Um, and we don't have to, but it is recommended that we, we do adopt it. And then we just need to let them know um, that we are following the schedule. And of course, it's automatically approved. We just really are letting them know that we're adopting it. Um, and so that is my recommendation that we adopt the Wisconsin Municipal and um, general record schedule that the Public Records Board adopted just because it then would be consistent hopefully through um, all the other communities that are adopting it. Attorney Captain, how is their their recommended retention schedule different um, or the similar to what Menasha has right now in their code, in our code? Uh, for the most part, it is very, very similar. It's likely that maybe what we did is just put it in a different format when we adopted ours. Of course, ours was adopted quite some time ago. It has not been updated. Uh, I did have occasion to send this general record schedule to the department heads and ask them if there was going to be any issues with using uh, this schedule. And I, you know, received comments back that the department heads were fine with the, with the schedule that the Public Records Board adopted. Again, it also um, includes uh, information about whether the, um, 
trying to think of what organization it is, the Historical Society, State of Wisconsin Historical Society, in order to destroy records. Every, before any records are destroyed, there needs to be a um, notice that goes to the Wisconsin State Historical Society before those records can be destroyed. And the, one of the positives about adopting this general record schedule is that there are certain records that are excluded automatically from that requirement. Um, you know, things that would not necessarily be um, important to the State Historical Society. And otherwise, we have to do that separately for the records that um, we may destroy. Even if we have a retention schedule, you still are not able to um, destroy them without having the permission of the uh, State Historical Society. So that is uh, another benefit, I guess. Thank you. Alderman Ted Grady. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, Chair Nichols. I guess my question was, Following that schedule that they tell you, do they also tell you how to dispose of certain records versus shredding or just throwing away? So, like payroll, tracking. any type, any type of payroll things or social security numbers have to be shredded, blah blah. Just so that they, you have a following of what certain records and how to dispose of them. Attorney Captain, um, it is not indicated actually in this record schedule, but that is something that uh, department heads are already aware of as they, far they as the- They currently do that? Okay. Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, I want to say it's, do we have somebody come once or twice a year? Uh, no, they- A shredding service. A shredding service. I remember that, that they, like at, at um, after year end, that we had like a big huge bin outside like our where we keep payroll records and some things like that, things that we're not going to come down store down here. We everybody's putting everything in there. We had it marked, and then I know I think Brian Hazley took them away and did them properly dispose of what they were supposed to do with them. So, okay, yes, because we have so much of that at our place where certain things are shredded versus not. As long as you just follow that, I thought maybe they would s specify in there shred after seven years or not, and, or just destroy. Okay. Thank you. There is a re uh, recommended motion at the bottom of our memo from Attorney Captain. We'll look for a motion at this point. Alderman Rapella. Hang on. Hang on. There you go. Thank you. I'll make a motion to amend the ordinance uh, presented by Attorney Captain. Uh, ordinance 02219, number one, 01419. An ordinance repealing and recreating Title Three, Chapter Three, Section Three Dash Three Dash Seven of the Code of Ordinances for Public Records. Would you like to add and notify the Public Record Board of the City's intent to use the approved general record schedule? Yes, As, I would. Okay. And th thank you. That is the requested motion yes. from the attorney. Is there a second? Second. I'm sorry, Alderman Kruger. You got it. <laughs> Got it. All right. Uh, we have a motion by Alderman Rapella and a second by Alderman Kruger to approve the ordinance and notify the Public Records Board. Any other discussion? Seeing none, we'll take a roll call vote. Motion carried on roll call 8-0. And with that, we'll look for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. We have a motion by Alderman Taylor and a second by Alderman Kruger. All in favor, say aye. Aye. We are adjourned.